The piercing cries of the baby echoed through the house, signaling distress that couldn't be ignored, it was a moment that shattered the ordinary, revealing a stark truth about parenthood, not everyone is equipped for the immense responsibility it entails, while most parents strive tirelessly for their children's welfare, there are those whose actions jeopardize their little one's lives, driven either by indifference or a lack of basic judgment. My husband's shock was palpable as he rushed to investigate, his concern escalating with each passing moment, with a heavy heart, he dialed the emergency number, seeking help in a situation that seemed beyond our control, little did we know that this distressing episode would forever alter the trajectory of our lives today would have marked Landon's fifth birthday, a significant milestone that now carries the weight of unfathomable loss, at this age. Most children would be embarking on their journey through kindergarten, but for us, it's a day cloaked in sorrow, a painful reminder of what could have been, for years, I harbored the weight of Landon's story, fearful of judgment and the potential scrutiny of others, yet, with each passing day, the ache in my heart grew deeper, compelling me to share our experience in the hope of sparing other families from a similar fate, Jared and I were like any other parents. Striving to provide the best possible start in life for our beloved son, we diligently attended parenting classes, devoured countless books on child-rearing, convinced that we were prepared for whatever challenges lay ahead, little did we know that our journey would take an unforeseen and heartbreaking turn. Landon's arrival was met with joy and anticipation, yet his birth was marked by urgency, a stark reminder of the fragility of life, despite the challenges, he entered the world, a bundle of potential, his tiny cries filling the room with promise. As he was placed in my arms, I felt an overwhelming surge of love and devotion, vowing to do whatever it took to ensure his well-being, like many mothers, I embraced the importance of breastfeeding, guided by the pervasive belief that it was essential for his health and development. Our hospital experience, touted as baby-friendly, emphasized the primacy of breastfeeding, with little consideration for alternative feeding methods. Landon's early days were marked by exclusive breastfeeding, his latch deemed exemplary by medical professionals, it seemed we were. Following the prescribed path to ensure his optimal health and growth, Landon's constant presence at my breast became a defining feature of those early days, the lactation consultants would commend his latch, reassuring me that everything was proceeding as it should, yet, amidst the flurry of medical assessments and well-intentioned advice, there was a crucial oversight. The possibility of my struggle to produce milk due to my diagnosis of PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, during my hospital. Stay, the signs of potential lactation challenges were evident to the lactation consultant, my medical history, including borderline diabetes, PCOS, infertility issues, and the exigency of an emergency C-section, all contributed to the risk factors for delayed lactogenesis and insufficient milk production, despite these red flags, the emphasis remained steadfast on exclusive breastfeeding. With little consideration given to alternative feeding options as Landon's cries echoed incessantly, I found myself tethered to a cycle of continuous nursing, desperately attempting to soothe his distress, the nurse's explanation of cluster feeding seemed logical at the time, echoing the lessons learned in prenatal classes, and trusting in the expertise of medical professionals, heavily influenced by the haze of post-operative medication and the novelty of first-time motherhood, I relinquished my concerns. Assuming all was well, however, reality soon shattered this illusion, within the first 24 hours, Landon's extensive nursing sessions yielded no relief, with minimal evidence of wet diapers, a concerning indicator of his insufficient fluid intake within 27 hours of his birth, Landon had already lost 4,76% of his body weight, a concerning sign exacerbated by his escalating nursing sessions, culminating in continuous breastfeeding by his second day of life. Despite this, the number of wet and dirty diapers produced offered little reassurance, with three wet and six soiled diapers. Recorded by the second day, by the 53rd hour, his weight loss had surged to 9,72%, far surpassing the safety threshold outlined in scientific literature. Critically, the correlation between diaper output and milk intake remains tenuous in the first few days of life, confounding efforts to gauge nutritional adequacy accurately. This ambiguity is compounded by the absence of data within the baby-friendly hospital initiative regarding the safety of newborn fasting and weight loss, leaving infants vulnerable to potentially grave complications such as hyperbilirubinemia, hypernatremic dehydration, 
and hypoglycemia research underscores the alarming prevalence of hypoglycemia among exclusively breastfed infants, with 10% experiencing levels linked to a 50% decline in cognitive proficiency at age 10, even with aggressive intervention. The persistent cries and insatiable nursing characteristic of newborn starvation serve as harbingers of impending brain-threatening. Complications, demanding urgent attention and intervention to safeguard infant well-being, in the critical early days of exclusive breastfeeding, infants may receive only a fraction of their required calories, leading to profound hunger and thirst, in response, they may cry incessantly and nurse continuously, seeking relief from their desperate need for nourishment, when a mother's colostrum fails to meet the child's caloric needs. The baby may spend hours nursing in a futile attempt to Alleviate hunger, paradoxically, cluster feeding, characterized by frequent nursing sessions, can exacerbate the situation by causing the infant to expend more calories than they receive, resulting in fasting conditions and accelerated weight loss. This phenomenon, known as the second night syndrome, in the breastfeeding community, often manifests on the second day of life when infants experience heightened nursing demands mothers, under pressure to adhere to exclusive breastfeeding guidelines may resist supplementing with formula, further exacerbating the child's nutritional deficit, consequently, infants may become lethargic with compromised vital signs, exhibiting symptoms of hypoglycemia, excessive weight loss, and hyperbilirubinemia, all indicative of severe starvation. The incessant crying observed in newborns is often misconstrued as normal, but it can be a poignant indication of underlying hunger, unbeknownst to many parents, infants are meant to eat, sleep, and soil there. Diapers, not cry incessantly due to starvation, the realization that a baby's cries may be a plea for nourishment rather than mere discomfort can be a sobering revelation for caregivers determining how much a baby is actually getting when exclusively breastfeeding can be challenging, while wet and soiled diapers and regular weight checks provide some indication, there are limitations to these measures. The threshold for acceptable weight loss and diaper output remains uncertain, leaving Caregivers to navigate this ambiguity, in Landon's case, he was discharged from the hospital at 64 hours, having lost 9-7% of his birth weight due to continuous and excessive breastfeeding, compounded by his mother's delayed milk production. Unfortunately, such findings are not uncommon in newborns discharged home for exclusive breastfeeding. Despite the prevailing belief that it is normal for breastfed infants to lose weight initially, there is a lack of scientific evidence supporting the Safety of allowing babies to lose up to 10% of their birth weight without risking serious complications. Yet, this perception persists, leading to inadequate instructions for supplementation, as in Landon's case, tragically, Landon's discharge without supplementation proved fatal, within hours of returning home, he went into cardiac arrest due to dehydration resulting from unintended starvation, Despite the prevailing mantra that breast is best, the consequences of inadequate nourishment became devastatingly clear. In hindsight, Landon's mother wished she could have supplemented with a bottle to ensure her baby's adequate intake, recognizing the importance of ensuring a baby's nutritional needs are met, she lamented her inability to turn back time and make a different choice. Meanwhile, Landon's continuous breastfeeding at home eventually led to his being found unresponsive prompting his parents to call emergency services for assistance. When emergency services arrived, Landon was found to be asystolic. With no heart rate, CPR was initiated, and he was rushed to the local ER. Upon arrival, he was diagnosed with pulseless electrical activity, indicating no effective heartbeat along with no blood pressure. Medical interventions were swiftly administered, Landon was intubated and received multiple rounds of epinephrine, he was hypothermic, with his temperature measured at 93, 1 Fahrenheit, despite 30 minutes of CPR, ultrasound revealed no cardiac activity. With parental consent, CPR was ceased, and Landon was placed on a ventilator while receiving intravenous saline. Miraculously, after 20 minutes of receiving four fluids, Landon's pulse returned, he was then transferred to a level 3 neonatal intensive care unit, NICU, to undergo the cooling protocol, a specialized treatment for babies experiencing brain injury. The diagnosis revealed hypernatremic dehydration and cardiac arrest from hypovolemic shock, underscoring the severity of his condition. Despite the medical interventions, Landon's mother grapples with lingering guilt and questions, wondering if 
supplementing with a bottle could have prevented this ordeal reflecting on her experience with Landon and recalling her daughter Stella's quiet demeanor as a newborn, she realized the stark difference in behavior, she now understands that Landon's incessant crying was a cry for help, a sign of hunger that went unrecognized until it was tragically too late, every day, I grappled with the feeling of failure, consumed by the belief that I had let Landon down, his hospital stay included a brain MRI which confirmed the presence of brain injury consistent with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, a condition resulting from oxygen deprivation due to low blood pressure caused by dehydration and cardiac arrest, further diagnostic tests revealed diffuse seizure activity on EEG, indicating severe widespread brain injury, given his grim prognosis. The agonizing decision was made to remove him from life support after 15 days, the autopsy report painted a heartbreaking picture, attributing Landon's death to hypernatremic dehydration, followed by cardiac arrest, leading to hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and diffuse brain injury, despite the sorrow that engulfed me, Landon gifted me with 10 incredible, life-changing months in the wake of his passing, I found myself humbled, my relationships tested, some crumbling while others found renewal, through this profound loss. I learned the art of forgiveness and discovered the true essence of life, a fleeting journey filled with boundless love, despite its imperfections, unable to bear the thought of Landon's death being in vain, I've gleaned invaluable lessons from this tragedy, understanding the depths of compassion and unconditional love, thank you for taking the time to read our story, and I invite you to witness the beautiful moments we shared during our 10 months with Landon, these complications underscore a critical issue. The current breastfeeding guidelines lack sufficient study and understanding of newborns' caloric and fluid requirements, often leading to complications before interventions can be made. A single bottle could be the crucial clue that saves a child from such tragedies, serving as a mother's first indicator that her child may be starving from exclusive breastfeeding. If you notice your baby showing signs of distress or symptoms of starvation, we urge you to advocate for your child's needs. Mothers should not hesitate to notify hospital administrators if they feel pressure to avoid supplementing their child's feeding to address hunger. Remember, you have the right to feed your child, and your baby has the right to be fed, no one but your baby knows how close they are to empty, and their only way of communicating distress is through crying, listen to your baby and trust your instincts, life can be challenging, and one common mistake parents make is leaving their children unattended inside a vehicle, especially during hot weather. This is incredibly dangerous, as the temperature inside a car can soar to 20 degrees Celsius hotter than the outside temperature, even on a cool, cloudy day, tragically, an average of 38 young children and babies lose their lives each year due to being left unattended in a hot vehicle, these incidents are devastating and entirely preventable, during hot summer days, temperatures can easily reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, inside a car. The temperature can quickly climb to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or more, it's crucial for citizens to heed warnings and never leave children or pets unattended in a car, as it poses a considerable risk to their safety and well-being, Steve Eckel, a retired Middlesex County Sheriff's Office Sergeant, dedicated numerous years to protecting the community he served, as a family man with five beloved daughters, Steve's commitment to helping others never waned, even after retirement, one summer day. Steve embarked on what he anticipated to be an ordinary shopping trip, little did he know that his innate desire to assist. Others would soon be put to the test, as he stepped out of his car, amidst the scorching heat, Steve heard the piercing cry of a baby, initially, he assumed it was a mother trying to soothe her child, however, his instincts, honed by years of law enforcement training, urged him to investigate further, following the direction of the cry, Steve soon discovered its source, a baby left alone in a sweltering car. The oppressive heat outside made it clear that the temperature inside the vehicle must have been dangerously high, potentially nearing 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the baby's frantic screams revealed the distress caused by the suffocating heat. Without hesitation, Steve knew he had to act swiftly, despite being retired, his sense of duty remained unwavering, recognizing the imminent danger posed by the scorching temperatures, he sprang into action. Drawing upon his years of law enforcement experience to rescue the helpless infant, when Steve reached the car, he urgently attempted to open the doors, only to find them all securely locked, however, a glimmer of hope emerged as he remembered the sledgehammer stowed away in his truck, 
Retrieving it, Steve dashed back to the car, propelled by the urgency of the situation. Despite the scorching heat and his choice of footwear, flip-flops, Steve sprinted across the parking lot, driven by the dire need to rescue the trapped baby, with adrenaline coursing through his veins. He knew there was no time to waste positioning himself. Strategically, Steve aimed for the driver's side window, calculatedly choosing the safest approach to reach the baby, with a forceful blow, the window shattered, allowing Steve to swiftly unlock the doors and rush to the opposite side of the car. As he cradled the distressed infant in his arms, Steve noted her alarming condition, she couldn't have been more than four months old, her tiny body drenched in sweat, her eyes filled with exhaustion and distress, aware of the urgent need for medical attention, Steve promptly dialed 911, his voice steady despite the intensity of the situation. Within 40 minutes, the EMTs arrived, and Steve remained by the baby's side, providing comfort and reassurance amidst the chaos. Meanwhile, as the mother emerged from the store, she was met with a scene she never expected, a crowd surrounding her car, its window shattered, and her baby rescued by a stranger, shocked and bewildered, she soon found herself in handcuffs, confronted by the gravity of her negligence. The mother of the baby, confronted with the consequences of her neglect, found herself in handcuffs, facing charges of endangering the welfare of a child, as the EMTs tended to the rescued baby, the weight of the situation bore down on Steve, tears welling up in his eyes as he contemplated the potential tragedy that had been averted thanks to his intervention. In the aftermath of the incident, authorities reached out to the baby's father, as the couple was no longer together. Recognizing the urgency of ensuring the baby's safety, the police released her into her father's custody where she would find refuge and care away from the tumult caused by her mother's actions. As the legal proceedings unfolded, the mother faced accountability for her recklessness, while Child Protective Services took measures to safeguard the well-being of the baby. Placed under her father's care, she would be shielded from further harm, her safety prioritized above all else reflecting on the events that transpired. Steve shared his belief in guardian angels, expressing certainty that he had been the instrument of divine intervention in saving the baby's life, his courageous actions in responding to the infant's cries echoed the unwavering dedication of a retired police officer, whose sense of duty and compassion remained steadfast even in retirement. Bethany and Tim Webb, residents of Heidela, were overjoyed when they welcomed four identical baby girls into the world. The news came as a delightful surprise to the couple, who had been together for two years before tying the knot in June. 2015, however, they were in no hurry to start a family, their journey took an unexpected turn when an ultrasound scan revealed not one, but four babies on the way, the quadruplets, Emily, Grace, Michaela, and Abigail, were delivered via C-section at Edmonton's Royal Alexandra Hospital, the birth was an incredibly nerve-wracking experience for Tim, who felt his heart pounding as he witnessed the miraculous arrival of their daughters, he likened the moment to a surreal magic show, where one baby followed another, until there were four beautiful bundles of joy in their arms. Bethany and Tim were amazed by the sight of their identical daughters, each with forty perfect toes and forty tiny, grasping fingers. Despite their identical appearances, the couple found it challenging to distinguish between them. Even the NICU team resorted to labeling the babies as A, B, C, and D to keep track of them. The arrival of the quadruplets prompted the couple to make significant adjustments in their Living arrangements, previously residing in a one-bedroom apartment, they realized they needed more space to accommodate their growing family, Tim's mother graciously offered the first floor of her house, allowing the webs to settle in comfortably with their four daughters. As they embark on this new chapter of their lives, Bethany and Tim are filled with gratitude and excitement. They look forward to cherishing every moment with their precious daughters, grateful for the unexpected blessing. That has enriched their lives beyond measure, Tim is ready to embrace his role as the lone male among the girls, with a positive outlook, he sees the bright side of having two bathrooms in their new living arrangement, acknowledging the adjustment of living with five other females, despite the potential challenges, he believes they will manage just fine and looks forward to the journey ahead. Preparations for the quadruplets homecoming are well underway, thanks to the generous support of their community through fundraising efforts. The family has stocked up on essentials like diapers, formula, 
and other supplies, ensuring they are ready for the exciting yet demanding task of caring for four newborns. Tim eagerly anticipates every milestone, from changing diapers to witnessing their graduation ceremonies in the future, he envisions a close bond among the siblings. Envisioning them as inseparable and each other's greatest allies as they navigate life together, as for expanding their family further, Bethany and Tim are keeping their options open, while they haven't ruled out the possibility of more children, they acknowledge that it's too early to decide, given their current circumstances. Meanwhile, Angela Magdaleno, who gave birth to quadruplets on July 6, is adjusting to life with her expanded family, already a mother of triplets from three years ago. Angela finds herself with a total of nine children now, despite feeling a mix of emotions about the future, she remains grateful for their health and well-being. When Angela Magdaleno discovered she was pregnant with quadruplets, she was stunned by the news, her initial reaction was one of shock and disbelief, and her husband, Alfredo, recalls that she even considered running away from the situation, however, with the guidance of her doctor, Catherine Shaw, a specialist in high-risk pregnancies. Angela navigated the pregnancy without any major complications. Despite the challenges, Angela's pregnancy progressed well, and she delivered the babies at 32 weeks, surpassing the average gestation period for quadruplets. The girls were born weighing around 4 pounds and measuring 17 to 17, 5 inches long, while the boys weighed approximately 3, 5 pounds and were 16 inches long. The odds of conceiving quadruplets without fertility drugs are incredibly rare estimated at about 1 in 800,000, making their arrival all the more remarkable, adding to the rarity, the boys appear to be identical twins, according to their doctor, SOA Idris, as the babies continue to grow stronger, they are expected to join their mother at home in about 8 weeks, however, with 11 family members living in a one-bedroom apartment in East Los Angeles, Angela acknowledges the challenges they may face as the babies grow older. To help manage the workload, Angela will receive assistance from her two older daughters, who will play a vital role in caring for their new siblings. Despite the inevitable challenges, Angela remains grateful for the support offered by friends and family during this busy time. During their hospital stay, the babies are closely monitored, sleeping peacefully in separate incubators, adorned with blankets and connected to monitors and wires, with their full heads of straight black hair and plump mouths, they are a sight to behold Alfredo took their triplets to meet their new brothers and sisters at White Memorial Medical Center, giving Angela the opportunity to rest at home, despite the adjustments, the family is embracing their new reality, welcoming the newest additions with open arms. Sarah Kahan Gurevich, the mother of the quadruplets, shared that initially, their three-year-old triplets were unsure about the idea of having extra siblings, they had expressed their preference for just one more baby, not realizing they were about to welcome four new members into their family. The Gurevich family's joyous occasion took place on the fourth floor of the hospital, coincidentally on the 4th of July, a day typically associated with celebration and fireworks, however, for the Guroviches, the real spectacle was the arrival of their quadruplets, which they consider nothing short of miracles. The babies, whose names are yet to be decided, have affectionately been dubbed the Quad Squad by family members, born at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Beverly Grove, Los Angeles. Each baby weighed just over 4 pounds upon delivery at 34 weeks, while a typical quadruplet pregnancy ranges. From 28 to 31 weeks, the baby's early arrival has not dampened their spirits. Currently, they are under the care of the skilled team at the Geffen Children's Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, NICU, where they are closely monitored and supported. Sarah Gurevich and her partner, Rabbi Israel Gurevich, are eagerly awaiting the day when their newborns will be strong enough to leave the hospital and join them at home. The couple, who also have a three-year-old son, expressed their son's excitement at the prospect of meeting his new siblings. Quadruplets are exceptionally rare in the United States, with only approximately one in every 700,000 pregnancies resulting in the birth of four babies. Despite the challenges that lie ahead, the Gurevich family is filled with gratitude for the care and support provided by the medical staff and is looking forward to welcoming their new additions into their loving home in 2021. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported just 133 quadruplet births among over 3, 6 million babies born, however, Cedar sinai is currently experiencing a notable surge in multiple births. In early July, 
the hospital's NICU, where the quadruplets are being cared for, found itself bustling with activity as it tended to an unprecedented number of twin births, according to DailyMail.com, the NICU, which is now cradling the quadruplets, was simultaneously caring for 10 sets of twins, a remarkable occurrence Ashley Richardson, an RN and the NICU assistant nurse manager, expressed astonishment at the situation, stating that while they are accustomed to handling twins and multiples, the sheer volume of births at once is quite an accomplishment, Richardson noted that most of the twin sets admitted to the NICU were comprised of boys, with weights ranging from 2 to 6 pounds, the babies were born within a condensed time frame, adding to the busy atmosphere of the unit for many parents, such as Jordan Edelstein, who recently welcomed boy-girl twins. Seeing other families going through similar experiences provides a sense of comfort and camaraderie, hospital staff, though perhaps feeling slightly overwhelmed by the sudden influx, find joy in having the babies around, Bevan Meredith, the NICU assistant director and nurse, shared that the sight of numerous twins evokes fond memories for her, as she herself has twin sisters who spent time in the hospital as infants, this personal connection inspired her to pursue a career in nursing, looking ahead. The hospital staff eagerly anticipates updates from the parents and the progress of the twins as they transition home, Meredith even entertains the idea of a future reunion, envisioning a gathering of 21-year-olds born around the same time, amidst the flurry of miraculously delivering quadruplets, the hospital finds itself embracing the joy and wonder of multiple births, fostering a supportive environment for both families and staff alike. Today, Kita Beam, a resident near the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir, experienced both the joy of childbirth and the heartbreak of Loss within a span of 12 hours, at 2 a.m., on Monday, she gave birth to four babies, three boys and one girl, through a rare normal delivery at the government subdistrict hospital in Jammu and Kashmir's Kapura region, sadly, all four infants were premature and of low birth weight, requiring immediate specialized care in a neonatal intensive care unit, NICU which was unavailable at the Kara Subdistrict Hospital. Tragically, three of the babies passed away shortly after birth at the Kara Hospital. The surviving baby, a boy, along with the mother, was swiftly transferred to a hospital in Srinagar for specialized care, however, despite efforts to save the fourth baby after shifting to Srinagar, it also succumbed to the challenges of prematurity and low birth weight. The Kapura Subdistrict Hospital, lacking the necessary facilities for maternal and neonatal emergency care, frequently refers patients to hospitals in Srinagar. Unfortunately, this reliance on distant medical facilities has resulted in instances of patients experiencing delays in receiving timely medical care, sometimes with fatal consequences during transit. Initially, following the birth of the quadruplets, the Kara Subdistrict Hospital issued a statement indicating that the mother and babies were in good health, considering the rarity of such cases, Dr. Muhammad Shafi, the medical superintendent of the Kara Subdistrict Hospital, remarked on the fortunate outcome of the normal delivery, given the extraordinary circumstances in a separate yet equally heartbreaking development carlos morales from phoenix is preparing to welcome all four of his newborn quadruplets home but tragically not with his wife arizona currently has two of the babies at home with him while the other two were recently cleared to leave the hospital this comes after the babies were born prematurely adding another layer of difficulty to the already tragic situation sadly his wife erica aged 36 passed away just one day after giving birth, the couple had undergone IVF fertility treatment in a determined effort to conceive and complete their family. Mr. Morales recalls the last moment he shared with his wife, kissing her on the head and expressing his love before she went into labor at Banner Good Samaritan Hospital. Look at these beautiful blessings, Morales expressed to People magazine, referring to his newborn quadruplets. Even when they scream their heads off, I want to give them the biggest kiss, he shared. His anticipation of discovering their unique personalities and quirks, despite acknowledging the challenges of caring for four infants simultaneously while dealing with four babies is undeniably overwhelming. Morales is grateful for the support he receives from his wife's mother, who relocated to assist with the children, the quadruplets, Carlos Jr., Paisley, Tracy, and Erica, arrived one month ahead of schedule. But tragically, Erica Morales succumbed to hypovolemic shock, a severe condition resulting from significant blood loss, just an hour after their birth, 
she never had the chance to hold her newborns in her arms reflecting on the profound loss, Mr. Morales shared the couple's excitement about starting a family, only to have their dreams shattered in a heartbreaking turn of events, despite the immense challenges and grief he faces, he remains dedicated to providing the best care for his children. Honoring his wife's memory every step of the way, Mr. Morales reminisced about the memorable moment he first met his wife, despite the language barrier, he spoke only Spanish, while she spoke only English, he mustered the courage to ask her to dance, and to his delight, she accepted, their initial encounter took an amusing turn when he offered her his phone number, only to learn later that she had discarded the piece of paper, however, fate intervened, and they crossed paths again through mutual friends. Reigniting their connection, the couple tied the knot in Las Vegas in 2007, their journey toward parenthood began shortly after marriage, and despite facing a miscarriage, they remained hopeful, their joy knew no bounds when they discovered Erica was expecting, only to be further elated upon learning they were expecting multiples, however, Erica's doctor advised her to remain calm to avoid stress during the pregnancy, and Mr. Morales took on the role of caregiver. Ensuring she rested and stayed off her feet, throughout the pregnancy, Erica remained healthy, but on January 12, she was admitted to the hospital due to high blood pressure. Three days later, Erica informed her husband, who was at work, that doctors recommended immediate delivery due to her elevated contractions. The couple took photos and made videos before Erica went into the delivery room, surrounded by loved ones. As they discussed potential names, Erica reassured her husband they could decide later. Tragically, shortly after the babies were born and placed in the nursery, alarms sounded from the equipment surrounding Erica's bed. Mr. Morales held his wife's hand as she regained consciousness, only to be abruptly informed that she had passed away, recounting the devastating turn of events, he expressed disbelief and heartache, questioning how such a joyous occasion could quickly turn into unimaginable loss, from experiencing the pinnacle of happiness to the depths of despair, Mr. Morales grappled with the sudden and profound loss of his beloved wife, Erica, in a poignant tribute, he honored her memory by giving their newborn's names they had discussed, along with one he chose himself, Erica, the above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe our channel and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.